Now we're up a few stories and we're getting into the rhythm of pouring the upper floors. The floors are all pretty much identical and they can get really high production rates. And the forming is basically done with loose pieces. This is formed with sticks. It's, it's as simple as that. There are wooden posts, then there are members that run across the posts. In this uh, view they're running from uh, left to right. And then there are the members that are running up and down in that, uh, in that direction. And they're all loose pieces. Uh, a man can carry them. They're all easily managed. And you can cover a huge area in no time at all. Here you can see the tower for the tower crane and in the foreground uh, this tower will be for a concrete pump. Uh, early in the project they pour the concrete with a crane and a bucket and then they switch to this concrete pump. On the right hand side, the floor is uh, complete, that is to say the formwork for the floor is complete, and they have installed the bottom mat of rebar, and now they're going to install the utilities. This is one of the differences between this kind of residential construction and commercial construction. Here, that entire pallet of pipe needs to be incorporated in the floor slab. The conduits have to run in fixed locations. They need to turn up at exactly the correct point and that's a very time-consuming part of the process. You can see how quickly this goes. The laborer who's carrying those uh, stringers can barely keep up to the guys who are dropping the sheets of plywood and they actually get into a little uh, conflict here. Here he's already fallen behind. He doesn't know where to put this piece, but he's uh, he knows it belongs under the plywood, and he's uh, very uh, determined to do this thing correctly. And he's telling the guys to give him a break because they're ignoring him. So he takes matters into his own hand. So what looks rather chaotic is a very carefully or orchestrated system and he understands exactly how many string is needed in each bay and he's determined to get it right. Now you can make out all the vertical members. Uh, of course they're not striped, you're just seeing the sunshine coming through the stringers. But they're pretty closely spaced. There's a screw jack on each one to set it to the correct height. But they're not exactly all perfectly plumb. And it's um, a kind of a hurry up job, but it certainly gets the job done. They're raising bundles of rebar, and this fits in very nicely with our discussion about tower cranes. These people are using wire rope slings, which is uh, the way I pick up bundles of rebar or pieces of structural steel. And I have never seen these fail. Responsible people do look at them and there is a point where the 
the wire rope sling begins to look worn and needs to be replaced. But it is uh, tremendously strong, and because it works as a choker, it's hard to imagine the rebar ever getting away. There's a line hanging from the end of the rebar. Uh, that's a tag line, and that's used to get control of the load. Sometimes the load can just uh, rotate slowly, and you really don't want to grab it with your hand. So using the tag line, you can control it. And they're going to set it down on a series of horses, which is a great idea. Uh, typically, in the heavy construction business, I see them always dropping the rebar on the ground. But setting it on the horses, first of all, makes it easy to take the slings off. And it's a lot easier for the workers to uh, pick up the pieces when they're waist high instead of bending down and lifting them off the ground. There is somebody down there. It's probably a carpenter making sure that the posts are reasonably plumb and the uh, horizontal members are resting snugly on them. So that area certainly requires some attention. You see this diagonal bracing? Your eye can pick it up here and there. That's put there initially to stand up the column forms. But it's critically important, and here's a good view of some of the vertical posts. Getting back to the diagonal bracing, it's needed to stand up the column forms and get them plumb. But it needs to be left in place because the entire system of forming can collapse. It needs a good deal of horizontal restraint which comes from these diagonal bracing. Uh, the wind is blowing on it. You can uh, drop a load on it. it. It needs to be able to resist any kind of horizontal movement. There was a time when concrete was poured with buggies. They would uh, drive around, they would drive along the deck and then apply their brakes and tip their load of concrete. Well, every time they applied their brakes, there was a tremendous horizontal force applied on the formwork. And without this diagonal bracing, the entire floor of forms could collapse. So this is critically important in this application and in any application. Your mind gets focused on the vertical loads, but there are these unpredictable horizontal loads from the wind uh, or from the sudden breaking of equipment these need to be taken into account. This is a good view of the formwork. The floor below it, those are reshores. The forms have been stripped and removed and replaced by these vertical posts. The sequence goes very quickly. In a matter of days, you've, you've accomplished another floor. The earlier floor is still green. It, it's just barely developing its strength. And so it needs to be reshored. It couldn't possibly take the loads of the new floor.